Hi, welcome to another lightweight tutorial. I'm Rich Thomas, and on this tutorial, I'm going to be modeling a can of Coke or a soda can or any kind of can you want, Fanta, whatever. I just picked Coke because it's the uh, it's the most common common one we know. All right, it's going to be quite simple modeling and surface and texture, and hopefully, hopefully, I'm going to get a nice, nice little rend at the end. I think. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Right. Got our modeler panel. So I'm going to click on the image editor. Load. Now I've got, um, I've got a couple of images here. This is a top view. And I've got a side view. This is the side view of the cam, roughly. That's all right. Right, exit that. If I press D, Go into my display properties and go all the way across to backdrop. And go load up the top view. If I bottom left on these, these are all the views we have basically. So if I go bottom left, I'm going to load the other one. So this is the front view and the top view. Nice. It's going to need a little bit of altering to get right. Hopefully you can do. Right, okay. If I go into create tab, disk, press N. The default is on the X axis. But we want it facing up. It's also a meter wide, but it doesn't matter too much about the size. We can do that later. If I hold control, no. Right, that's that's weird. Okay, it's lined up perfectly with that. I'm happy with that. What we want to do is size bottom left up so uh, it matches completely with. As, I'm, as I pull this wheel on the size, I can size it up or down. And I want to make it so that it's level. So the edge of the disc is level with the edge of the image, as you can see. That's roughly a size of our can. As you can see, I follow there now. Now, how many segments do we have? That's probably more than enough. More than enough segments, that I think. And you can increase it. Let's see, 48. That's probably too much. Yeah. Let's try 36. Again, it don't matter. All right, okay. Now I can draw it up or down on the disc. Control it, and what I want to do is I'm just going to go all the way down to here, roughly there. It's not a perfect side view, of course, so I'm a, it's on a little bit of an angle. That's okay. I pull it up to about there. I press space. We can keep our disc, and now it's created it. I'm going to close that. All right. So we got our we got our disc. Maybe I will go back into that and move uh, on the horizontal. Move it just so it's a little bit more centered. That will help later. Now nah, I will keep that just because it's on the edge. Nah, I'll leave that. Now you can either start at the bottom or the top. And we've got two polygons. So I'm going to start at the bottom. I think, right, press B, I've, unfortunately I don't have a bottom image, I think I do, no I don't, I'm just going to guess this, hold control on the, hold control on the B bevel, this is on here it is, multiply bevel, if I drink it down now, oh, what you want to know, what you want to make sure is you've got your selection point from the center. Cool. 
I'm going to do another bevel now. I'm using the can I have as reference. I, I think I'm sure I had an image, but it doesn't matter. Maybe you're better off getting a, a bottom render as well. One more bevel. Now what you want to do is I'm just going to bevel all the way in. All the way in here. Goes out, goes out a bit more. Now it's just capped off now. So one more bevel. And what we want is to make sure all we, because it will get pinching, we will. If I, if I was to, if I leave it like this and press subdivide. Oh, that's actually quite nice. But we can't have that, you see. We need four point polygon quads. We can't really have that, so I'm gonna make this very small so that you can't see it. Now if I press E and collapse, what it'll do is it I think in other programs call it poke or something. And you'll get this. If I go into the sub patch menu, you will get this. It's ultimately what we need. If I zoom in and if I go select two, what I want is to turn these are three point polygons and I want to turn them into a four point vertices polygon. Uh polygons of four vertices. So in order to like select the one the two polygons I need, and then I go shift Z. Sorry about that. And I just go all the way around. In clockwise fashion. Or counterclockwise. It doesn't really matter. Right. If I go if I press tab, we got a smooth enough cam. That's gonna need a bit more work, I believe. So what I need to do is it's got a it's got a real good bevel, curved bevel, so inside this can. So I'm just gonna bring this up about there. Excellent, right. What we need to do is make a make an edge loop all the way around here because we want to create a nice curved uh, fashion. What we can do is Bandsaw Pro. I want it right in the middle. Initialize that enough and it'll quite handily as it keeps the vertices selected that you just created. So I'm just going to pull them up. So we've got a nice curved inset so I can. And that's quite handy. It's quite nice, isn't it? Looks good. We might want to add some vertices on here now. Edge loops to tighten up. Because if I press tab, it's far too smooth. So we need to tighten, tighten these polygons up. So if I add an edge loop here. Right on the edge, using Bandsaw Pro again. See how it's tightened up that edge. What I want to do is really do it for these now. I'm going to mirror that. I've got 10% and 90%. So it's created the edge loop on both sides. Now what it's done is it's, it's hardened up that, straightened out that edge. We probably want to do it for here as well. I think. And then maybe 
do it for that because it's got, got quite a hard edge there. Right, looking good. We have our bottom of our candle. I'm going to add an edge using the knife tool. I'm going to add an edge all the way across there. That will tighten that edge up at the bottom. Cool. So now well, we can move on to the top part now. Select the top polygon. Use bevel. Press B for bevel. And just bevel up. Guess what? Bevel up what you see. Um, just going to do that. And then an inset. And go all the way in there. Follow what you see, what the image is showing you. Follow. Bevel once more. As you can see, it, it goes inwards again, beveled in. Right, cool. That's not quite right yet, though. I think we need an edge in the middle. Control H to. Uh, Size it up. Yeah, looking all right. I just need to move all the vertices. But this edge, just tidy it up a bit. All right. I'm going to add a segment. Uh, okay, I'm just going to knife it across here. That's tightened up the, the top part of the can where it goes in. Now we have, I have it looking pretty cool now, I think. Something I need to work on the top part of the can. This will be where all the detailing is. Select this polygon and it's got a slight bevel outwards. Press B again, it's got a slight bevel outwards, not much. If we could press B and B again, I can go upwards. Press B and then in. Huh. Okay, it hasn't matched up right with. Hasn't matched up right with that. Never mind. Let's go back into my. Really, we're about there, aren't we? My images aren't quite matched up. Doesn't matter. Right, so I've got one bevel in. If I could, if I look at my can I have on my desk, it goes inwards like that, like so. Right, another bevel in. Now it pops right out, does. Fortunately, my images are really poor, they're not quite matching up.
Right. One more bevel. And we go inwards. Like so. Right. Okay. Here we are. That is most of the can done. Bar if you clean up things afterwards. Um, turn it all on sub patch. So there we are. We need to. Probably need to bandsaw there. Mirror across, just to tighten that up. I think what I'll do is I'll just round this corner off using the chamfer tool. So that'll give me that. Okie dokie. That's our can, except the, the detailing. Now what I'm going to do is, I have the top polygon selected and I'm going to move all these vertices to follow that. Hopefully it'll work. Hopefully it'll work. I'm just going to hide. If I press the plus key on my, uh, the, the equals key on the on the, uh, the keyboard, I can hide it all. Hide all the rest of the geometry because I only need the top part. Right. Okay. If I go into my drag tool and make sure symmetry is selected, I should be able to just move independently all these. I'm going to turn sub patch mode off. Don't really need that. Right, so we just what we want to do is best we can move these vertices to follow the outline, follow the outline of the reference. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's not going to be perfect. It does not matter because what we're doing is just a can. Every can's different, I guess. Right, bear with me. Just moving all these vertices. As you can see, it's not quite symmetrical, but it don't matter. It's, it's good enough, I think. Good enough. Just going to tidy it up. They're looking a bit wonky. That'll be fine. Right. Go back to polygon selection mode and... What we got is it beveled, it bevels inwards now. So I need to press B again and we bevel inwards. Press B and we bevel back up. I think it goes back up, doesn't it? Back up to where it was. Cool. That's good. Excellent, right. And if I bevel once more, I'm going to try and get it into this out, outline of this so I can create that now. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to drag it. Best I can. Try and make these polygons, these vertices, nice to spread out evenly. Doesn't too much, it won't matter too much about this bit because this is just flat polygons here now. 
think so, anyway. Yeah, more or less. Hmm, right, okay. Maybe we'll drag that one down there like that. Because I'm going to have to knife it across. Yeah, we might do that. Deselect. Right, okay. I'm using our knife tool. I'm gonna just gonna make sure these polygon is polygons all four poly vertices. So I'm just knifing it across now. One, two, three, four. Cool. Now. If I merge that, I should be able to bevel inwards, like so. And I've got a good edge loop around it now, which is quite cool. Simply, what we want to do is go inwards. Clean it up a bit, using the drag tool. I'm going to move that down there. I want to probably want to move this point, this point here, so that we get that right. Now, this, these last main polygons, we're going to um, make sure clean these up. So, knife them across again. Uh, that'll be hard. Now we can knife it. <laughs> I had to move them out of the way there. Just so I can get it knife it across. Now if I go into sub patch mode. Yeah, here we are. Very nice. Cool, right. I need to tighten up these edge loops up now. Add some edge loops and tighten up. So maybe if I bandsaw that across, I get that. And do we want it that to be super tight? Probably not. Maybe if I do that. And do it for here. So now you get that. Which is quite nice, isn't it? I'm happy with that. Very nice. Now if I press the uh, backslash key, I can unhide all my polygons that I, I had previously hidden. So here we go. Let's have a look at our cam. Yeah, it's looking nice. That's perfect. Happy with that. What we need now is the ring pull. So I'm going to another layer very quickly. I'm going to go in the box. I'm just going to draw out a box, filling out the, uh, the ring pull. Now, it's, again, it's not perfect, but who cares, right? Maybe I can move it horizontally just to match up. Cool. I'm just going to make it a flat polygon at the moment. Oh no, no, it won't. Control E just to extrude out. And what I can do is select the edges. I'm going to modify tab. So that's a chamfer. Or you can use rounder. And 
do it again. Let me get this now. Nice rounded box. Just at the bottom vertices. I'm going to use the transform tool for this. So it's just here. Right click anywhere in the middle. Just going to move it about. Stretch it and move it about. Just to roughly match what we're doing. Probably want to knife it in the middle as well. It doesn't need to match the reference too much, really. You're not going to know, are you? Who's going to know? I'm going to knife it in the middle. Well, that's not letting me do that. Oh, okay. It's because it's got symmetry on maybe. Let's try and do it from both both angles. Right, so I've knifed it in the middle. And what we want to do is if I select both of these polygons, should be able to knife press B. I've got this now, and it bevels inwards. Just move these points inwards. Right, cool. If I press B, B for bevel, I can bevel inwards now. I'm going to constrain them. I've got two polygons, one on the top, one on the bottom. I'll delete both of them. Now we have a hole. Unfortunately, they aren't merged yet. So I've got to press M to merge, and it will merge all of these vertices together. So now I have a hole. Cool. I've got to do the same for that. Except we have a slightly weird, hmm, slightly weird shape for this, don't we? Um. How do I do that? Right. Knife it across. Move his vertices up. This is quite tricky. Okay, okay, right. I guess I'll just. Hmm. Press A.
Right, yeah, that could work. Press E, and I'm going to merge it right to the middle. Press E again, press V, it goes right there. Make a polygon. I hope it's doing it on the top. Yeah. Right. Move this outwards. Press E and move it outwards. Oopsie daisy. Right, bad is it? Maybe if I pull that out. Merge them two. Right. Knife that across there. Let's just do a quick little. Merge. Make polygon and then make polygon. Okay. What I'm going to do is delete all the bottom part now. Move them back up. Because I'm going to have to mirror it, you see. Delete half of this. Right. Make sure these points are on, properly aligned on the axis. Right, find mirror. Oh god, oops. Mirror that across. And before I do anything else, I need to sort this one out. Control. Uh, oops. Just knife it. Knife it there. Merge them two. Excellent. Now we need to make some depth here. So make a polygon, bevel inwards. Right to the edge of that, delete. Right, that's that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool for my ring pull that. Not perfect, could be a lot better. I guess could pull that out.
Right, okay. If I go Control V for mirror, I'm just going to select it right at the bottom of here. And you see what it's done? It's mirrored the whole thing from top to bottom. Hopefully, it has merged all the vertices as well, which it has. Cool. I'm just going to press C to uh, bandsaw all of them. And then go to. Oh, that's done wrong. Okay. Reverse that. Just tightening the adding some edge loops. The very edge. Just to tighten this edge up as you can see. Reverse. Cool. Nice. That's what we want. Now these are slightly inserted in, I think. They're not quite. Something like that. You get get that shape, don't we? No, I don't really like that one. I'm just gonna get rid of these, and we can band glue, which gets rid of the uh, gets rid of the vertices rather than adding them. I'm just gonna bring bring this in, this edge in a bit. In. I don't know what I'm going to do the same. Mm -hmm. Uh, did that a bit sloppily. Never mind. Okay, okay. That's not bad, is it? Could be better. You can add as many segments as you want. And I need to get going on this. Maybe I'll taper that in. Okie dokie. Now we have a little basic disc. So I'm just going to go into a new layer. Create. I'm just going to draw out a disc. Now it's saved the uh, settings. We really don't need that many. And we want it going just about over it. Just about over it. Won't need the polygon on the bottom because that's not visible. We won't need this. Bevel once. Bevel again. Press E, collapse. Select all these polygons, shift Z. Merge them all to four vertical polygons. So now we get that. Pretty cool. I want an edge there to be fair. Select select loop. Uh what do we do? Chamfer. Let's chamfer that edge. 
So we'll tighten it up. Hopefully, that is our ring pull. We can done. Very nice. I'm happy with that. Control X to merge. And control V to paste. Now, we need to position it. So press T, move it all the way up. Now it just sits on the top of the can, doesn't it? Like so. That's roughly it now. Very nice. Control V, Control X, sorry, and then Control V. Paste it all into the same layer. Now we have some polygons that are on face selection mode. So you want to press tab, deselect, and we have to have a look at our can. Awesome. That is fantastic, don't you think? And if you look at the um, statistics, and we have pretty clean topology, four point polygons, it's looking really nice, nice and tidy. Quite happy with that, to be fair. Now, what we want to do is press Q, Coca Cola can. Name a good surface. That's a bit too busy, that. Just call it can. <laughs> yeah. Cola can. You can give it any kind of surface in, smoothing on, whatever. Doesn't matter. That's it. I'm going to go ahead and save this. I've already got a directly made uh, Coca Cola. Underscore can. Print say press initialize that, keep that right. Save. Let's have a look, that's nice. No look at the wireframe. It's clean, it's tidy, and that's nice now. Next step is obviously the texture in. Hi, welcome. This is part three. Final rendering. Seed setup and final rendering. And this is where we left off. We've got our can and our ground all, all textured up, all looking nice. As you can see, it's looking pretty good, isn't it? It's, it's pretty stretched. But, yeah, a bit more tweaking is needed. But I think that's good enough. I really do. It's only going to be a basic, uh, basic little rundown. You can always go back and alter it. Right, so this is modeler. This is not what we want. We want layout. So if I go send object to layout it will load up a new version of layout it should send me my model which is done that's pretty cool and there we go look right um i'm going to change i'm going to press grid size to about one meter As you can see, if I click a 3PR, what I get now is my very basic looking can. It's pretty cool, isn't it? It's pretty cool. It's, you could almost just render that. Almost. I'm going to move the camera close to the can. Move it up on the Y and let's have a look. There we go. That's ready to render, ready to model. I can rotate it whenever I want. We can do quite a lot with that. I'm quite happy with how that's looking. Right. Let's get our scene set up. First off, what I'm going to do is I want this to look, let's have the final render looking quite nice, like it's just come out of the fridge. So we want little droplets of water. On the surface of the can. So we can either do this in modeler, model your droplets, or a new version of Lightwave has allows you to finally create geometry inside layout. Which is, um, I could have made a ground plane actually. Um, you can create a cube, only basic primitives, but what we need is a sphere. So we need tessellation. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm just gonna initialize that. 
And as you can see, here we are. It's created our, press T, it's created our sphere. Now it's way too big. So let's just size that down to about there. I'm going to put this on zero. There we are, we've got our new model here. Now I want this to be duplicated all over the surface of the cat. So if we go into our upcoin item, we select our can. If I press P for, or you can select them manually, P for object properties. We've got all these drop down views now. I'm going to go render appearance. I want to go to the very end one, it's called instancer. What's this going to do is going to add it tons of tons of uh, copies all over the all over the model. So we go add instancer, add this. Okay, okay. Then we add object. We add our sphere. Turn on shaded mode, and on the left, on the right here, we go on surface. Surface name, color can, distribution random, and what you'll see now, if I go here, we've got one version of it, haven't we? Right there. Now on this wheel, I can just go beep, we can copy it all over. We can cover our can in that little, little sphere. Now they're, they're all the same size. The good thing about Instancer is it allows us to randomize the size up a bit. So if I go 15 and go all the way up to 100, maybe we'll do that. Then just cover him a bit more. Awesome. You can even stretch it if you wanted. Cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. They look a bit. They do look a bit. Um, yeah, we don't want to do that one. Heading or the bit. Let's have a look at them. Yeah, that's all right. You can add as many as you like. I'm gonna go for that. That'll do me. Now, of course, um, they don't have a surface, do they? So, they don't have a surface. So what we need to do is surface editor, smoothing, and if I go into preset, Oops. Open preset shelf, and we're just going to load a basic liquid for this. I should do it. As you can see. So look. How's that looking? Yay! All our bubbles are now just like a liquid. Very nice. Right. Now we need to get the lighting done. Go into our backdrop. I'm going to turn the gradient off. I'm going to very quickly add an environment, a textured environment. I think what I'll do is I have somewhere um, did have somewhere, yeah, there. We've got a HDRI uh, studio type lighting setup. You can load any one you want off. Why? And I'll do it spherically. There we go. Nice. Hoo hoo. I shall load environment light. Maybe I'll load that up too on the color.
Nice, that's looking pretty cool. Um, look how we're reflecting. It's looking looking nice, that isn't it. Yes, I'm I'm happy with that. Perhaps a little oversaturated, but eh, don't matter. Don't matter so far. Now, on the surface editor for the ground, which is actually called default, not quite what I wanted. Um, I'm just going to give this a black back. Yeah, let's just make it black. Nice. Now we could um, roughen it up a bit. Add a node into the node editor. Give it some turbulence just on the on the uh, bump. Move my cam there. Right, cool. I'm gonna add another light. Now be able to clone it. We'll add another. I'm gonna add a light coming from here, like a bluey type, a bluey type light. Nice and blue. Cool, I'm happy with that. Now what you can do is lower the opacity if you wanted to on your um, texture environment. And of course lower the um, property. Lower the opacity on that. Yeah. Let's make that a bit stronger. This is all just uh, tweaking, tweaking the color. Put that into that and that. Don't like the reflection in there. I like the standard, I like the straight down reflection to be fair. I think that's pretty, I think that's a lot better. Don't you? Yeah. Right, okay. We're getting there, aren't we? <laughs> you get a nice little. Pew. Maybe I could just plug that into, maybe I'll make like another one. Plug it in and just, you know, uh, 10 seconds. Like a hundred. Yes. That's looking good. 
really good, isn't it not? I'm going to add a light source coming from here. I want it to I want it to be nice and red. Let's make a nice little red light source. Like a warm colour. I might not might not affect it that much to be fair. Now nah, we'll leave that. Get rid of that. Um, there we go then. There is my finished can. So what I'm going to do is move our camera into some positions for some final rendering. So this is frame one, frame two. Let's get one from this angle. Give it a little rotation. Let's have a look how it's looking. Hey, <laughs> nice. Get one from the top. Let's have a look at how our top's looking. Yeah, I'm into that. Yeah, it's a bit too bright there. Cool, that'll do us then. So here's our renders. Do, 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 do. Okay then, cool. Right, render options. Do, 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 do. Enable G1. Yep, we have to increase the rays. Let's get a nice render. 444. Um, all the way up for that. I'm going to have a nice fat resolution. Yeah, that is, that is our, it's our candle. Cool, isn't it? Isn't that cool? I think that looks really good. I'm so happy about it's come out. Oh, one final thing that we probably need to do is as you can see the backdrop because I've applied it as a backdrop. You can see it. I don't want to see it, so I'm going to use background color. So that's gotten that's you still applying the texture, but it's not it's visible now. Awesome. Very happy how that it's turned out.
could it be better? Maybe. Maybe we can do some more stuff with it. I think. We can lower that. You could maybe do a few more things. Um, ultimately, though, it's as good as it gets. Well, it's not as good as it gets. <laughs> you can always, always do better job, can't you? Oh, you can change the colour of that. My environment light. Um, here we go. I'm just going to click render. Now it's going to take quite a while, probably. So thank you for watching. Thank you for watching my tutorial. I'm going to drink my can. I've been using this reference now. This should be very tasty. So thanks for watching. Hi, welcome to part two. This is the texturing and UV mapping. And here is where I left off. The finished model, as you can see, it's looking pretty nice. Check if we've got any mistakes. We don't, everything seems nice. We've got one surface that governs the whole thing. What we need to do now is make a UV map. Now, this can be a quite a simple UV map. The top and the bottom will have their own UV islands and then from about here all the way to the top to the, where it meets this lip here, this, the edge here, that'll be the label, which is the where the all the writing is and the and all the info, so where all the colour will be. So I'll, that'll need to be UV mapped on different different axes. So yeah, let's get going. Okay, I have selected an edge. I've selected, using the edge selector, I've selected an edge all the way around. Okay, that's not the one I want. I'm just going to deselect that. Oh, it is. Well, we'll show you anyway. If I select two, select edge loop. I'm going to do it at the bottom. Cool. Right. So we this what this will do is it's sort of isolated the top and the bottom. So it's kind of like a pair of scissors. You see, you cut the top and the bottom off now. Now what we want is we want to seam down the middle. So I'm thinking, just do it on this Z axis. And we're just holding shift, select all the way up to the top. As you can see, we've got that now, right. So we've got both the top, the bottom, all isolated out. That's cool. Um, no, perhaps we don't want, we don't really want the, the, the pulley, do we? We don't need the pulley. So I'm going to hide that. Flick back and it should still have my edges selected. Right, cool. Now, if I go into my map tab, which is already modify multiply detail on map, this is where on my very bottom we've got all my UV map um, options here and tools and stuff. Right, we've got default ABF UV on map. What I'll do is just give a good approximation using these seams. If I just press it. What it's done is it's created the UV map, but it's create we don't have a UV map selected. So if we go into our bottom right tab, um, press the T for texture, and it was created a basic default. Default it, by default it calls it unwrap. If I select that, what we have is our UV islands. That's the top. No, that's that's the top. That's the bottom, and this is. The, the majority the can this is what we want cool I remember I have a little bit more don't we 
we've got this. We've got these two here. So what we need to do is, I'm going to go into my tab and make EV on the Y axis. Make sure we've got the unwrap selected. I'm just going to create. So it's just created a basic EV map. It does, really doesn't need to be too much for this, to be fair. It's just going to be grey. There's not going to be no colour detail or nothing on this, on the, on the top and bottom. Although, although I could put the serial number on. Right, using our point selection mode, close this. It's going to have a single view now. I'm just going to rotate it. I'm going to put it right at the top. All right, if I stretch it out so that it fills the whole space. Cool. Now, as you can see, though, it's a little. Little wonky, it's, it's not really done it properly. So, if I, I'm just gonna have to straighten these out now, stretch, just straighten them out. I'm gonna have to do this for every segment, which is quite annoying, but it's necessary because we're, we're doing it in a quite an old-fashioned way really using Photoshop a lot of people nowadays use substance painter and, and stuff like that I don't really want to use that now when I set the bottom row it'll also select the the, um, the, the vertices for the, for the bottom of the cap we don't want that I'm just gonna deselect them now what you're doing here is you're just altering the UV map coordinates, the vertices on the UV map. You're not, you're not touching the actual model. I could work like that to be fair. No, I'm going to straighten this out. I'm going to straighten every vertices out. Really, I wish I could. Um, there are some. Uh, I wish I could just straighten these out, like in one click, but alas, I cannot, so I'm going to have to do it manually. Takes a bit of time, you have to go through every segment and just straighten them out. And what I'm using is control and then stretch, H for stretch. And then I'm just using all the tool. And then just using all the tools for that. Right. These better ones are looking all right, to be fair. I could probably skip ahead now. Um, trying to be as fast as I can. Because this is rather mundane and we don't want it to go too long.
Almost that. <laughs> you can't avoid doing stuff like this with 3D, I don't think, sometimes. Though there are better packages, software packages out that probably do a lot of things, but Lightwave has got notoriously dodgy um, UV mapping tools, I think. Blender will be much better. But I'm using Lightwave. Right, here we go. Move the um, other, other parts to it in. It really doesn't need to be that big, that thing. <laughs> Maybe we could move this down. Cool. I think that could be all right now. Again, you want you maybe want to make the um, the gaps between the polygons, the segments, even. Right. So we can save that. Cool. I think that's all right now. There's no no change to the model. As you can see, it's it's still as it, it should be. So we're, we're good to go. Right. If I go on the top tabs and it's just I O, this is the export tab. We need to export EPS. Text to UV, yeah, export file, EPS file, name it whatever you want, and press OK. That's created now. Flick into Photoshop, and, and I've what I've done is found on Google, I've searched around and I found a nice stripped down Coca Cola label for a soda can. And and I've done a bit of clean up, done a bit of sharpening, changed the colours a bit, made it look a little better because it didn't come, didn't wasn't quite as good as this. As you can see, I've got like a little white line there. I'm gonna fill that while I'm while I'm talking. Um, so I've just done that. I've cleaned it up and it's ready to go. So we go file open. I want to open out EPS. Might take a while because it should be quite a big file, really. Probably don't need to make it that big, do I? Whatever. Okay, that's our texture map. It's come out looking quite nice. So if I flick back into my image, right click on the layer, duplicate, and we load it into the EPS image that I've created. Now the images aren't. Um, scaled up properly so what I need to do is scale on down so hold and control just make the image match make the image match now you probably want the, um, the grid layer on the top and I'm just going to go for that to be fair I think it's a bit bigger. Um, yeah, I think it encapsulates most of encapsulates most of it, doesn't it? So we're just going to move the image just to fit what we're seeing. We can alter the, um, we will be able to alter the, 
the UV maps to fit the image later on. So that's what we'll do, I think. Right, okay. So I want silver for all the other bits. Okie dokie. And what I probably want to do is fill this in with the red, the, the, the bright red for the Coca Cola. There we go. And just for OCD's sake, get rid of this. Flip it back to the grey. Fill. Okie dokie. That's roughly it for texturing. Simply, eh? I'm going to go select that layer, save as, Coca Cola can, CM. I've already got a file saved. Right, that should be it. Back to Modeler, if I hit the image editor, if I click load, load our just create a texture map. And there we go, that's it. That should be enough now. Right, surface editor, Coca Cola. I go into my edit node graph. This is our surface, and it's plugged in for the material to the material. Now, if we just go in the top left of this editor, 2D textures, image. If we load our Coca Cola, just, just the image texture we've just loaded up, on the mapping at the very bottom, we have UV map. We select that, and then it allows you to, another, another drop down will give you whatever UV map you want to select. I mean, your model can comprise of many UV maps. Mine's only got one. Uh, unwrap. That's the, our name of our UV map. You can change that later. I plug the color to the color. Let's see how we're looking. Hey, nice. Now that is looking pretty good, isn't it? Pretty happy with that. I think maybe if I have a look, look at my reference. Oh, it's about right to be fair. I could you can sort of alter the you can alter what you see. And if I turn sub patch mode on, we get this, which is all right. What we need to do that's because the model's still patched, but the UV map is straight. So, what we could change the UV interpolation to linear to, to sub patch, which brings it back. Yeah, now it's looking a little stretched, it does look a little stretched, doesn't it? Um, Again, you can just bring all this down. If you want to bring them all down, you can alter it a bit. Yeah, there we are. Very happy with how it's turned out. It's, it's a little bit, it's a little stretched, but ultimately it's pretty cool. Isn't it? Happy with that. Yeah, that'll do for now. Now, mate, ooh, yeah, okay. Now, what we've got is the edge of the polygon there. Now, it might not matter. 
Now if I was to maybe if I add it yeah if I add an edge right on 90% right at the top that should eliminate that bit yeah okay cool it's hidden it a bit it's hidden it a bit right there we go that's I can nice there's our UV map I'm gonna add an edge loop here clear on the 50% just to improve it a bit maybe we can add one here more segments yeah I'm happy with that very good and save okay that's our image now we need to do the surfacing and plug that um, I can load up the preset I can get a metal it gives you these um, basic preset metals if I load chrome satin up well we've, yeah we need okay what I need to do is plug I'm gonna go back to do what I did plug that into that so it should do it same again All right here we are so we've got a nice surface for our can it's reflective and we have our UV map there are a few things you can do on, on, the, on the can I've got on the desk there's a serial number I mean maybe you could do that or you can add some stuff at the top I mean, maybe I could do that now. <laughs> it's really not important, but basic little. Only small, isn't it? Oh, what does mine say? Thirty one, ten of the second D, and just add whatever. Right, okay. Just add that. That could work. I'm just playing here. This is maybe a bit overzealous. Rust rise. We shall save that color can overwrite the one I've just made. Let's see. Yeah, we are. Let's load it up. <laughs> there we go. Well, it's a nice little touch in it. It's way too big. But it don't matter. There's our can then. I'm happy with that. Very much happy with that. Right. That's our surfacing texturing done now on to the final step which is layout that'll be layout making final rendering for that very quickly just so just so we don't go back in we'll make we'll make a ground object here we go And I will align this on the rest of it on the ground. There's our can. Here's our ground. 
cool. Size it up a bit, maybe. Save. Um, Coca Cola. Ground, name is my ground. Awesome. Um, one thing I want to do is make sure I make sure the um, oh, where is it now? <laughs> I make sure the pivot is where it should be should be where because you won't be able to rotate it properly yeah so that's where that's it yeah good i want it there though cool awesome that's it all right tune in to part three